It's a great joy to worship the Lord with you this morning. And I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Pastor, for inviting us to be with you to worship the Lord this morning. This morning, we're going to talk about the God who satisfies our thirst. This world is thirsting. There was a lady who talked to us about her wonderful friend. One day her friend got into a fire accident. Her whole body was burnt. And she was struggling and fighting for her life in the hospital. When a friend ran to see her. She wept and wept and wept seeing her whole body full of wounds. And when she went near and said, Florence, Daisy is here. Daisy is here. Don't give up. Florence said, Daisy, can you do something for me? She said, yes, anything. She said, give me water. I'm thirsty. The doctors are not giving me water. Give me water. Give me water. The nurse said no. The doctor said no. She cried. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. And she died thirsting. The world is dying of thirst. That's why in John 19 and verse 28 to 30, Jesus went to the cross, took all our thirst upon himself and said, I thirst. I thirst. They took the bitter gall, the sour wine, the sour wine, and they gave it to him. The sour wine, the bitter gall, and he tasted it for us. He knows our bitterness. He knows our thirst. This morning, whatever is sour in your life, whatever is bringing thirst in your life, Jesus will come and satisfy you. He will satisfy you and he will give you the grace to be filled and come out without thirst. Let not your heart be troubled. What are the things that bring thirst in our lives? The first thing, thirst comes when we lose our glory. If you read Jeremiah 48 and verse 18, Jeremiah 48 and verse 18, the Bible says, O daughter, come down from your glory and sit in your thirst. O daughter, God says, oh daughter, my daughter, my son, come down from your glory and sit in your thirst. Why? When do we lose our glory? Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Sin makes us lose our glory. And it brings great thirst. Great thirst. Look at the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 and verse 7. She said, give me water to drink. I am thirsty. I don't want to thirst anymore. Give me water. Give me water. Jesus said, you had five husbands. And the one who is with you now living with you is not your husband. And she said, you are a prophet. And she brought the whole village to Jesus. Sin brings thirst. We are unable to have peace. And we are thirsting. The psalmist cries in Psalm 42 and verse 1 and 2. As the deer pans for the water, I am thirsting and panting for the living God. This morning, you may be thirsting and panting 
to come out of sin and the curse of sin. Jesus is here. He went through that curse of thirst by tasting the bitter gall. He will remove the bitterness of sin from you as you open your heart to him. He will surely set you free. There was a man called Charles. At the age of 17, he became an alcoholic. And he couldn't work. The family despised him. And fully drunk, he would go and lie in the garbage can. And he would eat what the dogs would eat from the garbage. He never knew what he was doing. He used to cry, I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. I'm thirsty. And go through the cans and find some leftovers and drink it. And he was like a dog. And he became very sick. Nobody wanted him. And finally, one of his uncles said, how long this fellow is going to be like this? And he put him in his vehicle and brought him to one of our Jesus Calls meetings. And this man was lying there amidst 40,000 people. As I was preaching that night, suddenly the compassion of Jesus flowed into me. And I pointed to a direction and I said, there is a man called Charles here. The Holy Spirit says, you are an alcoholic. And you're so sick. And I said, the Holy Spirit says, God wants you to be his servant. Today, give your life to Jesus. He's transforming you. Thank God for Jesus. He can satisfy any thirst. And the Holy Spirit came upon him, transformed him. I met him 30 years later in the city of Bangalore. This time he walked on the platform. He had a suit. He had a wife. He had three children. And he said, I was the Charles who was lying in the garbage heap 30 years ago. Today, I am preaching the gospel. And I have hundreds of people in my church turning to God through me. Through me. Through me. The one who satisfies your thirst tonight, this morning, is here. He will satisfy you. He'll set right your family life. He'll set right your relations. he set right your relationship. And he will give you an honorable life. Maybe that lady had lived with five husbands. Maybe everybody left her. Nobody understood her. Finally, she said, why should I be married at all? Let me live with a man and die. But Jesus went to her and satisfied her thirst. He will build your family. He will build your life. You will satisfy the thirst of others. And that's why he fills us with the Holy Spirit to bring back that glory. In 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18, and verse 17, the Bible says, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. And by that Spirit, the Spirit of God, you'll be transformed from glory to glory into the image of Jesus Christ. The living water. This morning, He is transforming us. Let not your heart be troubled. And again, when enemies oppress us, we become so thirsty. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 48, You shall serve your enemies in thirst when you do not obey God's commands. God says you will serve your enemies and you'll be thirsting, 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 serving the enemies, becoming slaves. Because you do not follow the commands of God. In Samson, in the life of Samson, in Judges 
15 and verse 18. Samson cries. He says, Now shall I die of thirst and fall into the hands of uncircumcised people, enemies who do not believe in God. Many times we fall at the, into the hands of the people who do not believe in God. And we cry, why? And they oppress us. They laugh at us. They walk over us. Samson broke the commands of God. And he cries, I'm thirsting. I'm thirsting. Should I fall in the hands of the uncircumcised people? People who do not believe in God. Maybe today we are in that circumstance. But Jesus has gone through that agony. He said, I thirst. Look at him in the garden of Gethsemane. He cries. His blood comes out as sweat. His sweat comes out as blood. And when he commands himself into the hands of God saying, not my will, Lord. I'm not going to live according to my will. I'm going to live according to your will. Whatever you say, I will do. Whatever you want me to do, I will do. When he said that, his thirst disappeared. He stood up and he looked at Judas and said, Friend, wherefore have you come? He came to betray him. He said, Friend, wherefore have you come? The thirst of fear left him. Nobody was his enemy anymore. He looked at Peter who was denying him and that one look of Jesus made him cry and repent and turn to follow Jesus again. In the midst of his denials, he looked at the man whose ear Peter had cut, the man who came to arrest Jesus, Jesus laid his hands upon his ear and healed the ear. He healed the person who came to arrest him. As he was on the cross, he looked at the thief when he repented and said, today you will be in paradise with me. Jesus knows the oppression that comes from the enemies. He has gone through that thirst. The thirst to be free of the enemies. And the Bible says in Romans 8.31, If God be for us, who can be against us? That fear of the enemies. The thirst caused by the fear of the enemies. He removes. Because he has gone through it on the cross for us. He has gone through it in Gethsemane for us. He gives you the grace to overcome the power of any enemy. He anoints your head with oil and makes a banquet before your enemies. You know what that banquet is? Let me tell you this true story. There was a missionary who went to a tribe in Africa. He was a teacher. So he went with his family. He was teaching them. And they began to follow him and follow Jesus. And they loved him. This brought jealousy to the chieftain. And the chieftain said, This man may become king someday. My people are following him. And he's preaching Jesus. And right before the eyes of everyone, he threw a spear at this teacher, the missionary, and killed him. The next day, after burying him, the son rode a horse and he came at top speed riding the horse towards the chieftain's house. And the whole village came. They thought he was going to come and kill the chieftain. And the warriors stood before the chieftain. But the boy came near. He got down from the horse. He took a bundle from the horse and he took it to the chieftain fell at his feet and put the bundle before him and said, Sir, my father is gone. Can I have you 
as my father. These are his clothes. Would you wear it for me? I have no father. Would you become my father? Would you become my father? I don't want to be an orphan in this world. The chieftain began to cry. He said, my son, I killed your father with a spear, but you have killed me with your love. You have killed me with your love. And the history says the whole village came to Jesus. What his father could not do, the son could do in a moment. The weapon is love. The weapon to overflow in this world to overcome every enemy is love. And Romans 5.5 5 says the Holy Spirit is poured into our hearts. And he pours love, love, love into our hearts. And this gives us the grace not to thirst anymore in the midst of the enemies. He turns all our enemies to be at peace with us. And we're able to live in this world. Live in your home. Live in your working place. Live in society. That's what the world needs to see Jesus through us. He will satisfy that thirst. You'll have no enemies. Because Jesus has gone through that thirst. He will help you. And thirdly, the poor and the needy thirst. If you read Isaiah 41 and verse 17. The poor and needy seek water, but there is none. Their tongue fails for thirst. I, the Lord, will hear them and not forsake them. I will open the rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make wilderness a pool of water and dry land springs of water. When Jesus was in this world, in Matthew 15, 32 and 14, 14, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion. He healed the sick and cast out the devils. And he had compassion and said, my children should not faint in hunger. I should satisfy them. We were in California. On Friday night, we had the meeting. And a lady came and cried and said, I have lost my job. I don't have finances to live on. I do not know what to do. They are going to deport me from the United States. I have to go back to my home. But I have a lot of debts. I have no hope in this world. And we were moved with compassion. My wife and I prayed with her. And said, Lord, do something tonight. You are God. The next day, Saturday night, as we were about to preach, she came running. She said, hold on, I have to say something. I'm still here. Last night when I went home, I got a text message. And they said, your job is given to you again. Come and join on Monday morning. She said, Jesus satisfied me. Satisfied me, he will satisfy you today. We're just going to pray in a few minutes. Every one of your thirsts to live in this world, he will satisfy. He will have compassion on you and feed you this day. Feed you with a job, feed you with a family, feed you with a child, feed you with the finances. Do you believe that? That's why Jesus went through poverty to make us rich. He will surely satisfy your thirst. And finally, the Bible says, lack of knowledge brings us thirst. Lack of knowledge. Isaiah, 15, Isaiah 5 and verse 13. Isaiah 5 and verse 13. God cries, my people have gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. Their honorable men are famished and their multitudes dry up in thirst. Their multitudes are dried up in thirst because they have no knowledge of the living God, no knowledge of my love, no knowledge of my power, no knowledge about what I want them to do in their lives. They look at every other person and try to do the things others do. My people don't wait at my feet to hear my voice. 
And so they are thirsty. They are thirsty. In Nehemiah 9.20, God gives the answer for that. He says, and you gave your good spirit to instruct them and did not withhold your manna from their mouth and gave them water for their thirst. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Many years ago, my father, who has been used mightily by God to bring millions to the Lord, was afflicted with a kidney disease. His kidneys failed. He was just 50 years old and millions were coming to the Lord. He was under dialysis. For nine months, the doctor said, you will die. And in that agony, in the midst of darkness, we cried. We said, why Lord? The whole world is laughing at us. This man's prayer healed millions, but now he is dying. People laughed. On the other side, death. On the other side, we were afraid whether he would go and the family would be in the streets. But then, one day, Jesus came. On his birthday, he spoke. As we were praying as a family, and the Lord said, my son, you know why you are afflicted with this sickness? You have lived a righteous life. You have served me. You have forsaken everything. You have humbled yourself. But then, when jealous people rose up and spoke against you, just two or three of them, you allowed their words to come into your heart. The wicked words of the jealous people. You have forgotten that I love you. You never allowed my words of love to come into your heart. You have forgotten that millions love you. You have not allowed them to pour their love into your heart. You cared only for those two or three wicked people, jealous people. And their words came into your heart, brought fear and disturbed the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. And made the devil put the sickness in your body. Today my son repent. Do not look at them. Look at me who loves you. Look at the millions who love you. And we said Lord we repent. We repent. And Jesus miraculously provided a kidney for my father. And that kidney worked for 23 years for after that. He was alive for 23 years. But then we brought, but then the Lord brought the greatest miracles through the ministry. A university was born and our family rose up and we serve God as a family today. And the millions of people are blessed by God, not because of us but because God satisfied our thirst. Many times we have lack of knowledge because we look at the people who criticize us, who are jealous, but God says, look at me. That's why Jesus went through the agony of thirst. If you read Hebrews 9.14, the blood of Jesus Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God to cleanse our conscience of dead works to serve the living God. Jealousy comes as a dead work, but then the Holy Spirit brings the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse our spirits, purge our dead works, and then makes us serve God. Takes away the discouragement, the pain, the sorrow, the loneliness and makes us see only Jesus and makes us love people, love people, love people. And we survive in this world through that love. May God give you that grace even today. He's here to remove your thirst. Shall we look up to God in prayer? What a friend we have.
love in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry. Everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Father, look into the heart of each one of your children. You cried, I'm thirsting. I'm thirsting. You know the thirst of your children, Lord. If they have lost their glory, wash them with your blood and bring them back to your glory, Lord. If they are under the oppression of the enemies, Lord, pour thy spirit of love through the Holy Spirit now. Fill them now with thy comforting, loving presence, O God. And tell them, my son, my daughter, love them, pray for them, and let them have only people to love them. Remove the power of the enemies from their lives and build their lives again. If they are sick in their bodies because of the hurt, heal them today, Lord. Heal them and build their lives again. And make them to stand up and minister to millions of people again. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, whatever need they may have. This morning, listen to this little prayer. And supply their needs. When they go back, Father, let every one of the blessings you have chosen for them. Be waiting for them. Be waiting for them. Be waiting for them. Listen to this little prayer. And answer the prayers of your people and wipe away their tears and turn their sorrow into joy. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen. God bless you all.